So let's take a look at the pharmacology. Like I said, it's an intro. So what we'll do, we'll throw up the drugs, we'll show you some stuff, we'll show you how to draw the medications up. Sometimes we'll have our orange lab to uh, let you guys learn how to do injections. And then as we cover each medical emergency, like respiratory is the first one, on Wednesday we'll talk more about albuterol, the inhalers and stuff. And we'll sort of break it down a little bit more then. This is just to sort of give you an introduction into the, the medicine. What medicines are carried on the ambulance, what you're able to do, what you're able to administer. One thing that you need to uh, understand about your role in pharmacology is on the testing, you never have a standing order. What's a standing order? What's the standing order? Huh? Right. So, in your protocols, you have a standing order. So, what would that mean? Like, orders that the medicine director gives you when he's not there. Like, stuff you can follow without having to ask him. Exactly. Good. That's good. A standing order is something that the medical director puts in the protocols that you don't have to call for. You don't have to call the medical control to get permission to give that medication. A uh, non-standing order, or just a, a medical control order, you have to call in. A standing orders, you can do that all the time. You don't have to call. Now, on your written exams, you never have standing orders. You always. So when you read through the question, when you read through the scenario, you'll see in the answers, Call medical control for permission to do this. All right. That is usually the right phrase in there. I'm not saying it's always the right answer, but remember that in EMT pharmacology, as far as the written part of this, no standing order. So every time that you see a medicine that they want you to administer, you have to ask medical control if you can help that patient administer the medication. You'll see that on the quizzes and tests as it builds up to that. And I'll point that out to you because that's sort of a tripping point uh, on the written exams. All right, let's talk about your first one, aspirin. Why do we give patients aspirin? Good. Uh, uh, no, that's not true. Blood thinner, but... We give patients aspirin to thin down their blood. Typically, it's when we give it if we suspect them having a heart attack. Even the commercials tell you to take two bare aspirin if you think you're having a heart attack. Aspirin is an, a class of drug. It's not an anticoagulant, okay? Uh, but it works as an anticoagulant. That's what we use it for. So if you suspect the patient having a heart attack, you give them 325 milligrams of aspirin. Typically, this, the aspirin is given in uh, chewable aspirin, so they can chew it up. On the ambulance, there's usually not any water. That's the problem. And, and swallowing can be a problem if you're, if you're having trouble breathing. So they just chew the aspirin. 81... How do we get to 325? Because baby aspirins are 81 milligrams a piece. Four, which would equal what? Hmm? 324. Okay, so if you're giving baby aspirin, you have to adjust the dosage. The one milligram is not a a killer, okay? You just have to adjust the dosage for your documentation of 324 milligrams of aspirin, not 325. If they take a regular solid aspirin, one solid aspirin is 325 milligrams. So that's, that's the correct dose. You want to take 325 milligrams of aspirin if you suspect that you're having a heart attack. And so we administer the aspirin Typically, the chewable aspirin uh, is four. 
peach. Just kind of chew them up. They recommend that everybody over the age of 40 take one baby aspirin a day. Um, I was with the American Heart Association, so I'm like, sure. I just, once I turned 40, I started taking one aspirin a day, but it almost made me pass out. It started thinning my blood down so much that I got dizzy and I got a headache. Uh, so, aspirin works very well. It works very quick. So, what's one of the side effects of giving someone aspirin? You're, you're thinking about nitro. Then it thin down there. Then thins the blood down. So, what's one of the side effects? Would you Increase heart rate? No. Do you get but, like less blood to your brain? No. You're, you're all right here. You're bleeding. The problem is bleeding. It thins down the blood so much, all, all of a sudden, if you start bleeding, then it, you really bleed. The other thing is that if they've already taken aspirin, you don't give them any more. The maximum dose that you would give them is 325 or 324. So if they've already popped the aspirin, you wouldn't give them any more aspirin. Or if they take other anticoagulants, if they're on any other blood thinners, you wouldn't give them the aspirin either, because they already take a blood thinner. That's very important. You start thinning their blood out too much, and when you start sticking them with needles, then they'll bleed all over the place. It'll be very hard. So, and it does work, it works quite well. It thins that blood down to get around that p potential clot that may be in the heart. So it thins, thins it down so it can move around that clot and add to circulation. Any questions on aspirin? Everybody good? Oral glucose is the next one. We'll talk about that in the diabetic emergency part. This is one dose of oral glucose, 25 grams. It's just like the little candy that you get. Actually, you can buy this over the counter in a different form. You just take it in the tube and sort of knead it. Squeeze it together. It's too thick to shake. So you just do that to sort of mix it up. It's very thick. Oral glucose or glucose, the class of drug for that, I'll add that to your list. That's the one I left off. It's on there. Oh, never mind. The oral glucose? No, the class. Oh, class. For right here what you need? Yeah, the class of drug. You guys eventually will start learning tons and tons of medications. Uh, right now, I'm responsible for about 40 or 50. My other job, when I was flying, up even more, is responsible for more drugs. To keep all that fresh in your mind, the best way to do it is learn the class of drug. That way, each class of drug or each family of drug, they act very similar. So once you learn the class, you can start, you know, putting them all together, and you don't have to relearn every contraindication or indication or side effect. They all sort of act the same. So the class of drug for oral glucose is a carbohydrate, okay. and it's used. The indication is low blood sugar in a patient that is alert and oriented enough to where they can swallow. The patient has to be able to swallow. So a contraindication would be what? Unconscious patient. Good. Never put this in an unconscious patient or a patient that... Just right before unconsciousness. So the altered mental status. So if they have an altered mental status until the point where they, you don't believe they can swallow, then uh, you can't give them this. What do you give them? 
nothing. You can't do anything. They, you call ALS. It's a good question. Because if you can't give them this and they're hypoglycemic, then they have to give them this. Okay. And what they do, they come out, start an IV, and give them IV uh, dextrose B50, dextrose 50% sugar water, okay? Uh, IV, and then they, they raise their blood sugar up. But, but this was something that if, this, if they're unconscious or they have really altered mental status, then you would have to request ALS because they would need someone to start an IV on them and give them D50. And it works very quick. So we'll talk about both of these more uh, when we get in diabetic emergencies. They're both the same. Essentially, they're glucose. Right? This just happens to be liquid, and it takes intravenous. This route would be oral. Right. So give them the entire tube? Yeah. Oh, this, uh, the tube, yes. Good question. You give them the whole tube. And what I usually do, just to make sure that I know the patient can swallow, I'll help them, I'll hope, give them the tube and let them self-administer it. But I'll coach them through it. I say, squirt it on your tongue, leave it on your tongue for a little bit, take a little bit, and then swallow it. Sublingual, under the tongue, a very fast absorption rate. We'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but give them the medicine, allow them to take it under the tongue. I've seen pay, people who are so hypoglycemic, and when you're hypoglycemic or low blood sugar, you get this sort of urgency about food and, and need for sugar. I've seen them take this and just go, <laughs> you know, squeeze it all down your throat. I'm like, slow down. <laughs> You know, but if the onset is fairly slow, so you're going to give this and you're going to have to wait a few more minutes, recheck their blood sugar, and see how this works out. So, you uh, and we'll learn all about that in diabetic emergencies. But oral glucose is very, very good drug for someone that's semi conscious and can swallow. But never unconsciousness. That's a contraindication. Is that the 